them for entertainment. There are light shows, there are multimedia presentations, uh, there's music, uh, there's video. Uh, the pastor will get up and take a half an hour offering uh, and then preach for seven or eight or 10 or 12 minutes uh, and then everybody goes home. They've been entertained. Uh, the question is, uh, do you want to be a spectator? Do you want to just come to church and be entertained or do you want to participate uh, in the fruitfulness uh, that God intends the church uh, to bear? The church has become a place today of the casual believer. I have numbers of people in my church because my church is a well-oiled machine. There are ministries that function, that make everything happen, make everything comfortable. The building is clean. The musicians are in place. The pastor's done his job to prepare a sermon. And there are a lot of people that just come to the church, sit. They may give, they sing and worship, but they go home. They're not involved in the ministry of the church. Uh, they're more spectators uh, than they are participators. In order to bear fruit, uh, you have to participate. The church is the preeminent institution on earth. The church, as I said, is the body of Christ, and the church is the means by which Jesus intends uh, to bear fruit. A Bible college uh, is not a biblically ordained institution. Some other parachurch group uh, or organization uh, is not the church of Jesus Christ. They may do some good, they may have some benefit, uh, but the church uh, is the only biblically ordained institution uh, on earth. And when you stepped into this church uh, or whatever church you, you attend, uh, you stepped into a heritage and you stepped into a destiny. Children, when they're born, are born into a particular family. And they're born into a particular family's heritage and inheritance. And that's what this text is talking about. In verse 3, you shall expand to the right hand and to the left, and your descendants shall inherit. When you stepped into the church, the inheritance... And the heritage of that congregation began to become your portion. When we get saved and we give our lives to Christ, initially we're only thinking about the fact that our sins have been forgiven, our lives have been changed. God has wrought a work in us. We're not the same. We've been delivered from our drugs and our alcohol and our personality and our character and things are radically changing. That's all we think about initially. But when you stepped into the church, you stepped into a destiny. That's why this scripture can say what it says about you. It's talking about the descendants that are going to come, that are going to form the church of Jesus Christ, uh, and that is then going to expand on the right hand and on the left. Uh, you have to plant churches. You have to become the disciple that God has called you to become. If you're called to preach, uh, you better be about the business of getting sent out uh, at the soonest possible opportunity. If I was you, uh, I would not want to stand before God not having fulfilled uh, the call of God in my life uh, if, if all I had done was kept putting it off uh, and not taking it seriously. It's your job to get people saved, and it's your calling and your responsibility to get sent out at the soonest possible opportunity. We have to do as much as we can, as soon as we can. What are you doing to prepare? What are you doing to get ready? We have a rich heritage in El Paso. This is a picture here. of a rally that I preached at in Colombia. No, that's not, I want the video. The video one and the video two are first. That's a video of a rally that I preached at recently, a few weeks ago, in La Paz, Bolivia. We began planting churches in La Paz, Bolivia. The El Paso uh, church has five churches there in that nation. They conduct a rally uh, uh, every year. I go there every other year. Uh, whoa, slow down. That's not. I don't want to show that video yet. That's a different nation. Uh, 
But that previous video is what God is doing in La Paz, uh, Bolivia. Some of you wouldn't even be able to find it on a map, uh, but there are people there just like you uh, that have been reproduced out of the El Paso church, uh, out of the uh, uh, San Antonio and the uh, McAllen church, and out of the church in Las Vegas uh, who have all planted churches into Bolivia, and now some of those churches are planting churches uh, and we're bearing fruit uh, because the body of Christ is functioning uh, the way God intends it to function, uh, and we've entered into to an incredible heritage. The next video is Colombia. Our churches in Colombia are all fairly new. The longest church I think has been there just three years. Now we have 11 churches in Colombia. Five of those are out of the El Paso uh, congregation. Uh, this was the very first rally we held. Uh, uh, in Colombia just a few weeks ago, about a month ago actually, uh, the very first rally, uh, the churches are growing, they're thriving. Uh, I don't have any doubt that sometime in the very near future, uh, we're going to have a conference center in Colombia. They're going to be making disciples and they're going to be planting churches. The next picture, this is uh, Victor and Consuelo Solis. They got saved uh, in 2000. He got saved in 2004. He was a drunk, an alcoholic. He was homeless, living on the streets of El Paso. And one of the men in our church uh, would pass by him. And then finally one day he stopped and began to witness to him. And at that time we were remodeling our church building so this... Uh, a uh, guy in my church brought him to the church uh, and he started working, remodeling the church and I never knew about him. I didn't meet him. I didn't know who he was. We had uh, 20 or 30 people working on the church for seven months and so I didn't know everybody that was working at the church. But he never got saved during that period of time. But the first service we had in December of 2004, uh, the first service we had in our new building remodeled, uh, he gave his life to Christ. And he began to come to church, but he doesn't speak English, so I never spoke to him. We have many people in our church that don't speak English, they speak Spanish. So he's attending church, and I hear later that what he started to do was call his wife and testify to her about how he gotten saved, how he got, and she'd slam the phone down. She'd had enough of him, drunk, drugs. Um, finally abandoned the family. She wanted nothing to do with him. She finally had peace in her life. But he keeps calling her. A month passes. Two months pass. Five months pass. Eight months pass. And he's constantly calling her. And she's not listening. She's angry with him. She's bitter. She hates him. She wants nothing to do with him. And then after one year, God gets involved, starts moving on her heart, and she says, I need to go to El Paso and see if this is real. So she traveled to El Paso. She got her heart right with God. She came with their four children, got saved, reconciled with her husband. And then in 2009, we planted them out. They pioneered a church. They pioneered a church in Guadalajara, Mexico. Then they pioneered another church in Juarez, Mexico, which is right across the border from El Paso. And now they're pastoring a church uh, in Santa Cruz de la Sierra, Bolivia. And this is what God has called us to do, to bear fruit, make disciples, uh, and become the mother that can thrust them out into the harvest field. This next picture, no, not that one, the other one. The other picture that you showed before. No, before. That one there. The, the woman on the piano and the guy with the guitar are married and they're pioneering in Colombia. When he was 10 years old, Josh Quintero went with his parents, his father Jose and his mother Yoli. Uh, I sent them into Madrid to pioneer a church. They stayed there for 10 years. So when they came back to El Paso after they were in Spain for 10 years, uh, Josh 
That young man stayed in El Paso. He was now uh, 18 or 19 at the time. And his mother and father and younger sister went on to pioneer uh, in the nation of Bolivia. When they were in Bolivia about three years ago, his father tragically got sick and passed away in Bolivia while they were pastoring a church there. And so we all flew down there. We took care of the homegoing service, came back to America. And then he married this girl, and he felt the calling that his father had to take the gospel to the nations. And he's currently in La Paz, Bolivia. His younger sister married one of the men from the Bolivian church. Uh, he became a United States citizen. Uh, they pioneered a church in Puerto Rico. They're now on my staff uh, uh, in El Paso as our Spanish pastors uh, bearing the fruit that God... This is what a healthy mother church does. Uh, it bears fruit. This next picture is a baptism in Israel. My daughter and her husband and three of their four sons uh, moved to Israel two and a half years ago to pioneer a church. Uh, and it went very, very slow initially. But when the war started, people started getting saved. They started opening up to the gospel. Uh, and in 24 days after the war, they got about 30 people saved. Uh, they now have a church. And I'd like to say this is the first baptism since John the Baptist. I don't know if that's true. But I do know that not a lot of people are getting baptized in Israel these days. But we have a fellowship church in Israel that's bearing fruit today. And that's one of the converts getting baptized there. This is a picture of the church in action. We have a single mission to get people saved to make disciples, and to plant churches. That's the vision that every pastor needs to have. I don't care if you're running 12 people after having been out for 20 years. God can give you breakthrough. God can help you. A healthy body reproduces and bears fruit. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, one of the signs of the last days before Jesus comes again, he said, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. This is such an incredible privilege. I can hardly believe what God has enabled my wife and I to do, to pastor this incredible church in El Paso, to have access to a congregation that is functioning in a healthy fashion uh, to bear fruit locally and to multiply disciples and to plant uh, churches into the nations of the world. I mentioned, I think, in an earlier sermon that out of our last conference, and I'm not boasting, I'm just testifying about what God's doing, uh, we were able to plant 11 new international churches either directly from El Paso uh, or from the churches that we have in the nations, planting churches themselves, uh, and we're continuing to plant churches uh, within the boundaries of the United States. This is such an incredible privilege. What does a mother do when she has a baby? She's in pain. It hurts. It's not a very pleasant experience. But that is all forgotten when that baby is in her arms all cleaned up her maternal instincts, her love, her care. What does a mother do? A mother rejoices. A mother and a father celebrate, and that's what's happening in our text. And I'll get to that scripture in a moment. I've always marveled at David when he said, he went into the house of God one day and he said, who am I, Lord, that you brought me this far? And I kind of think that way. God, who am I? I was a drug addict as a teenager, an alcoholic. I followed in the footsteps of my father. I was raised in a very dark, abusive home. I was very abusive myself. Renee and I got married, weren't saved, had a baby, were both addicted to drugs and alcohol. Who am I, Lord, that you have brought us this far? 
that you have handed us such great privilege. How could anybody walk away from this? I don't fully grasp backsliding and turning to rebellion and being to slam and criticize the church and the leadership and the pastor. What's wrong with you? We have such incredible privilege. David wrote in Psalms 8, verse 4, What is man that you're mindful of him, O Lord, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made us a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him, crowned us with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under our feet. God's given us authority. God's given us privilege. God's given us the ability to bear fruit, to have physical children when a man and woman come together, but also to bear spiritual fruit. And it's the joy and the delight of aligning our purpose with the purposes of God. What can compare with that? Verse 1, sing, O barren. You who have not born, break forth into singing. That's what birth does. It causes rejoicing. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You have not labored. You who have not labored with child. We did no good. We bore no fruit. We benefited nobody before we got saved, at least not as far as eternity is concerned. But now we can bear fruit that is going to last throughout the eons of eternity. One of the important features of our conferences is hearing the testimonies of our pastors as they stand in front of you. These are men and women, couples that have been sent to the cities and nations of the world, and they come back uh, and they testify about what God is doing. uh, And and I I don't just listen to the testimony, uh, but I watch the reaction of my congregation uh, as they begin to cheer and they begin to clap and they begin to rejoice uh, that a son of the El Paso congregation is out there bearing fruit and doing what God has called them to do. We have a purpose. God has put us into his harvest field to bear fruit and for that we sing and we rejoice and we cry aloud a healthy body a healthy Christian a healthy congregation has the function and the privilege and the miracle power to bear much fruit it's our job to get people saved locally and to get people saved in the nations of the world that's why we call ourselves a mother church. Let's bow our heads this evening. Amen. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. There may first of all be tonight, this morning rather, individuals that are here that do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have not yet been born again. You're not right with God. You do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you really want to know him. You're tired of sin, tired of anger, tired of emptiness, tired of brokenness. You want to get your heart right with God. Only Jesus can forgive your sin. Only Jesus can give you a new life. Only Jesus Christ can break the curse of unrighteousness and change you forever. That's what it means to be born again. That's what it means to come to know life through Jesus Christ. Your sins can be forgiven and eradicated if you will repent, come to Jesus, acknowledge your sin, and receive him as your Lord and Savior. I want to help you tonight. I want to believe God to work a miracle in your life. And if what I just said describes you, you know that you're not right with God. You know that you know that you know that you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. You don't have a relationship with God. I'm not asking whether or not you go to church. You can sit in this church from now until Jesus comes and not be right with God. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Repenting of your sin and receiving Jesus as your Savior is what makes you into a Christian. Jesus said you must be born again. He said unless you repent, 
you will all likewise perish. So in order to be saved, you have to acknowledge your sin and repent of your sin. You've done wrong, you've been wrong, you are wrong. And you need to get your heart right with God. And this is the opportunity that you have right now to do that. And I want to help you do that. I want to pray for you tonight, this morning rather. And I want to ask you if there's anyone here that you need Jesus and you'd like me to say a prayer for you before we dismiss, I want you to lift your hand right now. You're not right with God, but you want to get right. You don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you want to know him. There's sin in your life and you want to be rid of your sin. You want to be forgiven. Lift your hand right up and put it right back down all over this building. I want to get my heart right with God. I want to know Jesus. Pray for me. Maybe you're backslidden. You can sit in church and backslide. Whether it's going back into sin, getting angry with someone, leaving the church, but you don't have to leave the church to backslide. You can backslide right in your father's house. You need to repent of your backsliding, rededicate your life to Christ. Is there anyone here who's backslidden and you need to get right with God right now in Jesus' name? Are you contributing to the healthy f function of reproduction in the church? It's your job to get people saved. That means you have to have a healthy body. Some women are barren. The Bible describes us before we got saved as being barren. We weren't able to bear fruit. We didn't have spiritual health to bear the kind of fruit that's going to last for all of eternity. You could be in the church, but you don't have a healthy spirit, a healthy body. You may be filled with anger or bitterness. There may be a sinful habit that you're feeding. And it's very hard to reproduce when you're not right yourself. The importance of health when a woman gets pregnant, she has to go to a doctor and have a doctor's oversight to make sure that she remains healthy during the course of the pregnancy. And sometimes women will feel a pain or they'll just know that something's off and they call the doctor, they go to the doctor because they understand how important it is to maintain a healthy body in order to have this child be born in a normal, healthy way. So you may need to examine your own heart right now. You may need to examine your own heart. Am I contributing to the health of the church? Or is it not possible in my current state of spiritual health to bear fruit? And then collectively as a congregation, we all pray together, labor together, witness together, outreach together in hopes of making converts and then making disciples and then launching churches and providing the prayer and the money and the finances in order to make that happen. We are a mother church. If you're here and a pastor, you may be pioneering. You have to have the vision that one day you're going to be a mother church. You're going to make disciples and plant churches. Don't ever lose that vision. There may be other conference centers. We have several conferences in America. I think a total of maybe 13 conferences in America. We have two conferences in London. We have two conferences in Europe. There could be other conference centers that are birthed and raised up here in Nigeria or in neighboring countries. Your church can be a future mother church conference center. Every nation needs at least one conference center. But we have to have the health in our congregation that's required. I want us all to stand this morning. Perhaps what some of the other pastors preached, God spoke to you about, 
you're going to come to the altar and do business with God. We're opening the altars. I want you to come and find a place to pray and talk to God about the need of your heart in Jesus' name. Oh, God, I give you praise. I glorify your name. I exalt you in Jesus' name. Oh, God, I pray that you would purge and cleanse our hearts so that we can have a healthy spiritual life and therefore bear much fruit through our personal witness and testimony and through our function as the body of Christ, as the church of Jesus Christ, as a mother church that's able to make disciples and plant churches. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want us all to stand. And I want to do a couple of things. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I feel very impressed right now. I want every head bowed, and I'll wait until you decide you're going to bow your head. I want people to have privacy when I ask this question. Are there women here? You're married, but you're not able to have children. You've been barren. You want to have children, but you can't. There's a physical problem. You may not know what it is. It could be a problem with your husband, but you haven't been able to get pregnant as a married couple. God wants to heal you. I've prayed with numbers of women over the years and seen many, many healed over the years. So as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, are there any women here that you're not able to have children but you want to have children? I want you to lift your hand high. There's several of you that are here. Barrenness is a curse. It doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. But it's not of God. God wants you to bear fruit. 
and I want to pray. I want you to pray this prayer. Let's all help them and pray together. God in heaven, I break the curse of barrenness in my womb. I command my body to function the way that you created it to function so that I can bear fruit and have children. I break the curse of barrenness and I command healing right now in the name of Jesus. Let's thank God. Hallelujah. Now let's see which one of you women that just got healed is going to have non euplets No, you're just praying for one, right? Just want one. I don't want 69. I don't want nine. I want one. You all have to contribute to the health of your church by having a healthy spirit yourself. That means you have to rid yourself of your anger, your unforgiveness. If you're angry with anyone, you don't have a healthy spiritual life and bearing fruit is going to be difficult. That's what the cleansing power that's in the blood of Jesus is for. That's what the messages that your pastor preaches are for. They're to produce health so that the body can not only be for expression, but it can be for function so that you can give birth locally, adding to the church such as should be saved and that you make disciples and you plant baby churches to the cities and the nations of the world. So we're going to pray for cleansing so that we all can contribute to our church having a healthy womb so that people get saved and people get sent. Pray with me right now. God in heaven, I repent for everything in my life, every attitude, every thought, every habit, every imagination that is not of God. I break the curse of it and I want to rid myself of every attitude, everything in my life that is not of God that might hinder my ability to be fruitful and to contribute to the fruitfulness of my church. I want to have spiritual health so that we together can bear the fruit as a mother church that you intend in Jesus name. Let's thank the Lord tonight. And I want to pray for pastors right now. We're going to pray for pastors tonight. I'm sure I want your heads bowed, every eye closed. You're going to commit yourself to bearing fruit locally like you are trying to do through outreach and evangelism and witnessing, but you're going to embrace a vision that one day you're going to be a mother church because your calling is not just to rent a building and conduct church services. Jesus said, go into the nations and make disciples. That's what your calling is. That's what Jesus said the purpose of evangelism is that we are going to make disciples. We're going to reproduce what God's done in our life, in the lives of those who get saved and then train them and raise them up. And the and the mother church, the body of Christ is going to thrust them out out of the womb of the mother church to bear fruit in the cities and nations of the world. And I want you to pray with me right now. I as a pastor. I'm going to commit myself to bearing fruit locally and beyond my church through discipleship. Lord, give me a vision that my church and my congregation will one day be a mother church that plants babies into the cities and the nations of the world. And I'm going to work toward that. I'm going to pray toward that. I'm going to give my all toward that. In Jesus name, I pray. Let's give God praise. Oh, Riyadh Arabi, Lara, Baba, 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 Shando.
Yendere ala rabila raba kori ala rabila ramando roe ala rabila raba shari ala ramando. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We have one more service of this conference tonight. We're going to look forward to God doing great things. Amen. God bless you all. Let's praise God. Amen. It's Pastor. Amen. We're going to dismiss in a while. Uh, please, just to remind uh, pastors, uh, if you're sending our church tonight, please uh, contact Pastor Glenn. And uh, we're going to start the evening service um, uh, with prayer by 5 o'clock. Uh, be here. Let's bow our heads this morning as we dismiss in the word of prayer. Father, we thank you because of all that you have said and, and done in this place, the miracles that have happened, the lives that have been touched. I pray that it will go with us, O oh God, uh, and bring us back tonight for all that you have, have in store for us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.